the operating system defines a logical unit of storage and this is called a file. So we are not talking about the actual physical storage, we are talking about the logical storage. How this file will be actually stored on a storage device is different from what a file is. So the file is the logical unit of storage that means the physical properties of its storage on any device is abstracted. We don't want to know how it is being stored, where it is being stored, we just want to know that this is one storage unit and these files will be mapped by the operating system into some physical device where they will be actually stored in some way. So what is a file? We can say that the file is a named collection of related information saved on secondary storage. So it can be a sequence of bits, bytes, lines or records and this information this is defined by the creator of that file and the file can also be considered as the smallest allotment of logical secondary storage. This file can be of free from like we have text files or it could be formatted rigidly like you can have like your spreadsheets. Now these files you may be storing the different types of information in that. These could be source files, your executable programs, it could be numeric or text data, your photos could also be considered as files, you might have audio files, you will have video files. So all of these are referred to as files and each file is containing some related information and it is some unit of storage. Every file has a certain defined structure which depends upon the type of the file. So if we are having a text file, then there will be a sequence of characters and this sequence will be character organized as lines and or if there are multiple lines, then they will be organized as pages. If it is a source file, then there will be a sequence of functions and each function will further be organized as containing declarations and followed by executable statements. If these are executable files, then there will be multiple series of code sections and then the loader can bring each section into the memory for execution. So the file, the structure of the file will now depend upon the type of the file. With each file, we can uh, like associate some file attributes or the characteristics of the file. So the main file attributes are the name. This is the symbolic file name which is kept in human readable form. That means to each file some file name is given which is understandable or readable by humans like and it is usually a string of characters like the name of the file might be foo.c. So this is a, a like a C program file and the name of this file foo.c is it is a string of characters. Apart from this name there will be an identifier which is usually a number and it is a unique tag and this number is the number which will identify the file within a file system. So when there are multiple files and the way they are organized on the do storage device so within that structure, how that file will be identified, not by its name, but by this identifier. And this is usually in a non-human readable name. The type of the file is needed because this is the information needed for the systems which support different types of files. So if a system is supporting different types of files, then how that file has to be arranged or managed for that the type of the file needs to be specified. There is a location of the file which is a pointer to a device and to the location of the file on that device. So this file is being stored on a particular device. 
So let's say if it is being stored on a particular device, let's say the hard disk and on a particular, in a particular block or in a particular sector, then where exactly it is being stored, so the location needs to be specified. So there will be a pointer to the device and the location of file on that particular device. The size refers to the current size of the file because this file you might edit, it might increase in size also, it might decrease in size also. So this size it could be specified in bytes or words or even in blocks. Blocks are referring to the smallest unit of storage on the hard disk. The protection also may be specified which contains the access control information. That means who can read this file, who can write this file and who can execute this file. Timestamps and user identification might also be part of the file attributes. What was, when, what, when was it created, when was it last modified, when it was last used. All these can be useful for protection, security and usage monitoring. So these are the main file attributes which are associated with files. All the information related to files are kept in a directory structure. So you can think of a directory as a container or as a folder which is containing all the files. And this directory structure will be contain will containing all the entries related to the files. So this directory structure will also be on the same device as the files themselves. A directory entry in this structure, directory structure, it will consist of the name of the file and the unique identifier or the number that was assigned to, the, to this particular file. This identifier will help in locating the other file attributes. This, this identifier will be pointing to where the other file attributes are stored. Each directory entry may take more than a kilobyte to record the information for each file and that means in a system with many files, the size of the directory itself may be in megabytes or gigabytes. Directories are stored on the device. Where, wherever the files are being stored. So the directories are also being stored on the same device and they are also brought into the memory as and when they are needed. We will discuss more about files in further videos.